Club. How's everybody doing today? We are so excited to have with us Charles and Chris King. They're going to be leading us in worship. So you know, we've added a guitar. We might have a little sound uh, issues going on in the beginning, so just bear with us. But before we go into worship today, I want to remind all of our parents that our five to 12 year olds, they are starting this morning in the back with their own praise and worship. So we have any kids with us today, don't forget to check them in and they can be uh, led to the back for their own experience. Amen? Amen. Come on, lift your hands up all over this building. Father God, we bless you and we're hungry for you and we love you this morning. We're excited to praise you and to worship you. We bless you. Come on, church. Put your hands together. Hey, hey. Anybody love Jesus? Let me hear you make some noise this morning. That you're the risen Savior. That's what we make it. Risen, risen, he's risen forever. 
the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of us. Can you tell about two or three people? I have power. I have power. We serve an amazing God who is greater, who is bigger, who is stronger than anything we could ever face. Do you believe that we serve a mighty God? Let me hear you shout in this room.
consecration at the time, and some of you are feeling the effects of not having that. That whatever you like, you know, right. meat, whatever protein, whatever you like. <laughs> but we set aside this time to seek the face of God for His instruction and His direction for 2018. How many of you believe that this is going to be an amazing year for the body of Christ? How many of you believe that this is going to be an amazing year for harvest? Come on. Yeah. And as we're in the Word and we're seeking God's face, one thing I love about the presence of God. His presence, there is a fullness of joy. And that is right hand of pleasures forevermore. So listen, no matter what the enemy comes and throws our way, God is great. No matter how great or little G great it looks that the enemy's attack and it's a real struggle right now. And some of you have been praying and the enemy's trying to discourage you early in the fast. You know you need to just go ahead and get off the fast. It's not going to work. Or you know you need to stop coming. You know you need to stop giving. You tried that last year and it didn't work. I came out to let you know this morning that by the prophetic anointing of God, God said that this is the one that's going to work. This is the year that it works. What you did last Because you're not going in your own strength this year. You're going in the strength and the might of the Almighty God. And if God be for you, He's more than the whole world against you. So I need about 15 people that believe that if God is for us, He's more than the whole world against us. Can I hear you give a shout to God?
So we lift our eyes to the hills Where our help comes from, our help comes from you
on 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13. It says something that's very powerful and I think that's very important for us in this moment. And I'm paraphrasing, but it says, And it came to pass that when the trumpeters and singers were as one, lifting up their voices, or lifting up their voice to praise and give thanks unto God. And the thing I love about that verse, it says when the trumpeters, plural, and the singers, plural, came together as one to lift up their voice. It didn't say voices. I was like, that's grammatically incorrect. Like, where's the X? But it jumped out, at, jumped out at me off the page and it was one singular voice. When they lifted up their voices as one, the scripture goes on to say, then the room was filled with a cloud and the presence of God was there because the trumpeters and the musicians and the singers and everybody came together as one, lifting up their voice. Fast forward to Acts chapter 2. It says, when they were in one place, on one accord, with the same mind, there came a manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God. I believe this morning that we have an opportunity right now as musicians and singers, and if you can't sing, but we're worshiping with the people of God, come together as one. One body, one voice, one people. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. It doesn't matter what you believe or how you grow up. But the fact that we are the children of God in one place in this moment, we can have a manifestation even more so of the presence of God in this room. So I invite you, we invite you this morning to sing this with us again. Let your way go. Let your way go.
wanting to create within us in this moment a tenacity and a push and a press. As they were singing and ministering to the Father and we were doing that together, Charles began to break down those scriptures. My mind went back to 1 Kings when Elijah is postured at Carmel with his head between his legs praying for the release of rain and he sends his servant seven times everybody say seven times he sends his servant seven times he he didn't see what he needed to see the first time so elijah didn't stop he just kept praying he just kept pushing he just kept believing god he just kept interceding he said go again when i, I still don't see anything go again and there was a tenacity that was being birthed in elijah and a tenacity that was being birthed in his servant to continue to go and look even though there was no difference and there was no change, this fast is a fast of perseverance. It's a, a fast that determines, you know what? I might not see a difference, but that's not going to detour my prayer. That's not going to derail my faith. I'm going to keep believing. Go back and look again, Elijah said. Seven times. We all know the scripture. He goes back the seventh time. And he comes back to Elijah and he doesn't say, I see a tsunami. He didn't say, I see a hurricane on, on the horizon. He didn't even say, I see clouds billowing in. He said, I, I see the cloud the size of a man's head. Some of you, all you need is a dot. It's going to look like a dot in the sky. The only change was a dot. But the dot was all that the servant needed to wrap his faith around the, the word of the Lord. And then Elijah said, now you go tell Ahab that I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Stop. Wait, 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 wait. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Nowhere in scripture does it say Elijah saw the hand. spirit. There are some of you and you do not see a blessed thing, but all you need is confirmation in your spirit. There is a cloud the size of a man's hand, and it is going to rain an abundance of rain in your life, in your ministry, over the affairs of your day, if you will just align your faith with it, in Jesus' name. Are you hearing me? And I hear the sound
churches, this would be the time that we just transition. But can we just take just a moment before we transition? Just to soak, just a moment longer in this presence. Oh, 
just spoke prophetically. God wants to minister to your brokenness, those secret places, those unknown places by then. This is what this fast is. It's the fast that God calls according to Deuteronomy 28. Breaks the chains. Yes. It breaks every yoke. And your healing comes forth speedily. Don't know why you do. Trust issues on this fast. Yeah. Every spirit, every person in this place has to learn how to retreat because of church hurt or family hurt or relation, relational hurt. Thank you for healing on this fast. Just stay.
while everybody else is acting like it's a normal year and they're just eating what they want to eat. You ask yourself, why do I have to do this? And that's because God is going to use you to position everybody else for turnaround. But it's interesting that the specifics of the description of Elijah's posture was that he put his head between his knees. He got his heart above his head. Intimacy above intellect. And there are some of us, our deepest, darkest wounds and pains have come in intimate things. And God says it produced a bruise in your intellect. And what you've got to do is get your heart above your head and allow God through intimacy to shift things on the inside of you and cause those broken things to be restored and those things that need to be broken to be torn down. God, get our hearts above our heads. There are so many of us that we know what it is to live intellectually. We know what it is to live logically. We know what it is to live by what makes sense to us. But Father, we want to be led by your voice. Your voice is heard in times of intimacy. And many times what we hear in intimate moments defies intellect. But Father, we make declarations today in this fast as we are through the first part of our fast and merging into our second week. God, we declare in Jesus' name that we will get our hearts above our heads. Above our heads in 
Jesus name as of today we get our hearts above our heads in Jesus name it's a posture of submission it's a posture of giving up and letting go giving up and letting go of giving in to what God says giving in to his desires it's submission it's submission I received messages from them. We're not going to be able to be here today because of this garbage. We cancel its assignment in Jesus' name. I'm tired of it. We declare because of the healing power of an almighty God and the blood of Jesus that is not just for the remission of sin, but also for the manifestation of healing in our lives. We declare the blood of Jesus over our sons and daughters in this house. No matter if they're old enough to be my grandparents, I don't care. They're sons and daughters in this house. And I declare healing power in their bodies. We come against this foul sickness in Jesus' name. And we cast you out by the authority of the name that is above every name. You have no authority. Disease, you have no authority. Sickness, you have no authority. We evict you in Jesus' name. 
Jesus' name. Lord, I declare that today that the phone lines will be hot and heavy. With individuals declaring, I don't know what happened at about 11.35, but something shifted in my body. And I, I feel stronger and better than I have in a long time. We declare healing power to invade hearts, minds, spirits, bodies. In Jesus' name, we declare that. We've made agreement, God. We've made a point of contact. If any two or three shall agree, we've done that this morning. We've demonstrated agreement. We declare it is done. I declare that the healing power of individuals in this body that need healing today, that they're in this building today, that it is done. Say it is done. I declare that it is done by the authority of the word of God. It is done. It is done. Now slap your hands together and give God praise. number up on the screen and if you would just simply text welcome uh, to the number it's just going to send you some information on why we believe God has placed us here on the west side of Jacksonville we'd love to get that information to you uh, and so they're going to put that up on the screen there it is text welcome to that number and so can we put our hands together for all of our guests that are with us today uh, awesome, awesome. Don't forget, we have a special service tomorrow night at 7 p.m. It's going to be awesome. You do not want to miss it. Mr. M uh, Marcus Rozier will be in the house, such a powerful teacher of the Word of God. And so all of that begins at 7, and that will take the place of our family night this week. So there won't be any Wednesday night this week. Uh, it, that will be replaced with tomorrow, obviously with the kingdom. But did we love the kings, Charles yes. and Chris? Man, I love them so much. But we'll please be in the house tomorrow night. It's just going to be a phenomenal night. I cannot wait for that. But there will be prayer on Tuesday from 11 to 12. Also, too, uh, uh, Charles and Chris have two CDs at the back. Gentlemen, you can go, go ahead and come forward. They have two CDs at the back that you can purchase. Uh, one is a single and then one is a full-length project, I believe. Um, but they're five and ten dollars and they are at the back and I'm telling you what we love the music of Charles and Christine yes. They are just a powerful team and you will love it too So get it so you can begin to play it in your car and play it in your office play it in your home and uh, all that good stuff um, So if you will stand to your feet Father God, we love you so much. We're so thankful to be called your kids we thank you for how you loved on us today. We thank you that that love was like a blanket that went over us, God, and literally revived us and healed us and, and warmed up our cold soul, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are in this place today in a powerful way. And we are excited to apply the principles of God. And one of those principles is giving and is tithing. And so we, as your children, we apply the principles of God. And because we are applying the principles, we know then we can claim the promises. We thank you for that now in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said with a loud voice, amen. amen. Give us some good news, guys. You can be released to give.
extend your hands to the front. Father, we declare abundance. We declare supernatural increase and overflow. God, we thank you that you are doing what you've always promised in your word that you would do as a direct result of our obedience. We thank you that we have decided to make a connection point and to execute obedience and connect with your word and see your word come to pass. We declare that blessings and abundance are ours. In Jesus' name, say abundance, abundance. overflow, overflow. Increase. increase. Now shout amen. Thank you, Joe. Amen. Praise the Lord. We all took up all my time today. So I do not have time at all to break open this word because this is a 35 minute word and that's if I'm going mock 10. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a deep word. I'm going to get into this, I promise, next Sunday. Uh, I do want to show you this video uh, for just a split second and then I'm going to come back and encourage you and then I'm going to bless you. I think fasting is awesome. I mean, where else can you combine spirituality and dieting all in the same way? I mean, I think it's about right, pound for pound it does. You know, people think it's for monks or supermodels and stuff like that. But I'm here to tell you it's for everybody. Last summer, I had a 20-year reunion slash barbecue slash swim party to go to, and I done but had to drop about 85 pounds. So thanks to fasting, what has two thumbs look good in a swimsuit? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Fasting? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's great to uh, skip a meal or two so you can hear God's voice better, you know? Stay plugged into it. Yeah. You know, some people uh, fast from phones and music and gadgets. <laughs> that's, that's not a sacrifice. That's, that's not even biblical. I mean, that, that's crazy talk, you know? I mean, God gave us this stuff so we can stay plugged into it. Maximize our lives. It also keeps us busy enough to never be still or quiet. Are you even a Christian? <laughs> I never even asked for your phone for one minute. <laughs> Fine. Minute. You got it. No biggie. I don't care. I probably should take that. I fast. Okay, that's a total lie. I don't even fast at all. Okay, I want to. Another lie. Don't even think about it. The deal is, I'm hypoglycemic and diabetic, and that's not even close to the truth at all, okay? Hey, even the Bible says, he who hopes dies fasting, right? Right? Okay, Benjamin Franklin said that. Right before he died. Bottom line, fasting makes me hungry. Are we almost uh, done? <laughs> Hello! I'm Brett Johansson, and I believe that fasting is one of the greatest spiritual disciplines one can achieve in their faith. When my family or friends invite me to go to lunch, I gently remind them and passive-aggressively admonish them by reminding them, did you not get my fasting notification email? Oh, that I have the luxury to eat lunch like you do. <laughs> Every year around Easter, I go through a 40-day fast to heighten my sensation of the Easter holiday. This year, however, I've decided to tack on 10 extra days. <laughs> so by the time we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, I will have been fasting for 50 whole days. If I survive. <laughs> In my fast, I have a very rigid schedule. And if you do not have a rigid schedule, then God does not approve. Some people like to cheat and they drink flavored waters and juices within the fast. You must be drinking unfiltered well water. And if you do not drink unfiltered well water, God does not approve. In the afternoon, I put a point of silence around me. I do not talk to anyone. Yes, this does annoy people. Yes, it does anger my co-workers. I am persecuted within my fast. And if you are not persecuted within the fast, God does not approve. When I get home, I go straight to my prayer closet. I do not talk to my wife. I do not play with the kids. I let them fend for themselves. And if the kids do not fend for themselves and the wife does not get talked to, God does not approve. You know what? I'm gonna ask guys one more time, and then I am not in control of what happens. Okay? So give me the phone. Okay, fine. I need the phone. I need the call.
I figured that that would be a little comic relief for you today as we are venturing into our second week on the fast. Fasting is so vitally important, and really that's my subject today. That's what I'm preaching on. It's really what I'm going to preach about all month long. Um, but I really want to encourage you in this fast. I'm not going to, people have grabbed me in the back door, Pastor, what should I do? How, how do you want me to do this? I don't know what to do. And I struggle telling people what they need to do as far as a fast is concerned. I do, however, feel a strong compulsion in my spirit to make a recommendation. I firmly believe, and I'm not going to be emotional, I promise. I firmly believe that this year has a unique DNA. I just believe it. Whether you agree with me or not, it really doesn't matter because I still believe it. This particular year has a very unique DNA. It has a unique assignment connected to it. I don't know about you, but I want to fully fulfill every assignment that God has for me in this year. Therefore, I am willing to do whatever it takes so that I am focused. I'm a, I, I was never really good at the game, but I was always a big baseball fan. Don't ask me to play because you will not want me on your team. I was the kid in gym class. They got picked last. That was me. I was the white boy that nobody wanted on their team. That was me. Gym class has dark memories connected to it. I hated PE. But I remember there was a game, excuse me, there was a movie a number of years ago starring Kevin Costner called The Love of the Game. He would get on that pitcher's mound and he would say, clear the mechanism. And the, and the crowd silenced around him. And he was able to focus in on the strike zone. And he was able to throw the ball at unreasonably high speeds and unbelievably good at his trade and his task. This one particular game, he was pitching a perfect game, a no-hitter. As the game went on, he was in New York, he hates the Yankees, and you, you'll learn that in the movie, he doesn't like the Yankees, and, and so he hated to be in New York, he hated this in, environment, it was a very hostile environment, and toward the seventh inning at the stretch season, he started to not be able to clear the mechanism like he needed to, he'd have to shake his head, and he would say, clear the mechanism, and then finally it would engage. As we've been preparing for this Sunday, I heard God say, your fasting is helping you to clear the mechanism. It's helping you to silence the lies of the enemy. To silence the voice that the addiction used to have in your life. To silence the voice of that thing that used to control you and manipulate you like you were a puppet and it had the strings. That thing is going to be silenced during this fact. Because you're going to learn how to clear the mechanism. So what am I getting at? Again. I am not telling you that you got to do this, but this is a strong recommendation. Silence all other voices in your life, save God's. What does that mean? Cell phones, social media, television, movies, Netflix, all of those different things. Shut it down. The time that you would spend in social media, because see, we are living in a day and time where food is fast. We eat real quick, 10 minutes and the meal is over and we're about our business. But we get on social media for hours. The amount of time that you're on social media, pray. Read your Bible. Grab a book on fasting, grab a book on consecration, grab a book on having a disciplined mind, grab a book on moving in the anointing, grab a book yeah. and instead of getting on that device or watching that movie yeah. listen to God silence all those voices now I'm doing that and food and God is even doing some other things with me in regard to food and I'm not going to talk about those things but I'm just, I'm just saying I feel I feel the voice of the Lord calling us deeper in this season. He's calling us deeper. So I want to highly recommend for you to hear clearly what God is saying. Don't leave me you know. Clearly hear what God is saying and actively occupy that space of consecration. Because I just believe 
that God's going to speak to you in a way that surpasses what he said last season. Now, 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 let me cue in on that for just a split second. Don't be waiting on some revelatory thing that has, it is just inundated with profundity. Don't, don't get wrapped up in that. Just say, God, say something. And it might come with you just hearing God <clears throat> clear his throat. As he gets ready to speak to you. But know that the focus, excuse me, the purpose of this fast is to focus your spiritual attention. And some of you are your guests with us today. And, and we normally, I would normally be preaching. I would normally have you open up your Bibles. But I've already read to you several scriptures. I quoted to you other scriptures. And Ben was even flowing with me or whomever's at the desk, or the media, computer. And they threw up 1 Kings 18, I think. Did y'all throw that up there just a few months ago? So we read the word. Okay? So I don't want you to feel like that you, you, you've lost out on anything because God has spoken clearly today. And I want to hear him as he over and over and over and over again says, get focused. Get focused. Clear the mechanism. Get focused. Get your heart above your head and get your focus. Let God speak to you in this season of consecration. Because I believe that some powerful things are going to transpire. You believe that? Put your hands together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you don't need to miss next Sunday because this this is a, it's a big word. I'll be real with you. It's a very big word, and I believe that it's going to minister to you, but I've got to take time that's necessary to build an adequate foundation so that you can really grasp everything that God is saying because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack some schools of thought that rule our intellect, and because they rule our intellect, they cause us to forfeit our promise. So we got to change the way that we think. It's called a paradigm shift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we're, we're going to deal with that big time next week. And then we're going to unpack Matthew 17 where God says, this, that Jesus says, this kind cometh not out, but by prayer and fasting. There are some of us and we are dealing with cyclical things, things that keep happening over and over and over and over again. And it's because there's a spirit behind it. And only fasting will unlock the resources that are necessary to cause deliverance to come to that thing. Are you here? But there's some patterns of thought that help to perpetuate our habits and our ways of dealing with it. And we're going to attack that. We're going we're to really destroy that next week. Tomorrow night, Pastor Jennifer's already declared it. Tomorrow night is going to be a powerfully prophetic night. I do not need for you to miss it. I want everybody that calls Harvest their church home to be here tomorrow night. We are not going to keep you late. We're going to be very streamlined, but we're going to be very intentional about declaring the message of the kingdom called unity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Unity is not saying it's diversity moving in the same direction and we're going to exemplify that tomorrow night and we're going to see walls being torn down as we together lift up that one voice that Charles King was talking about earlier. We're going to do that together tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Now. Dr. Marcus Rozier was going to be here this morning, but had some conflicts at the airport, was very aggravated, and texted me this morning at 6 a.m. and said they messed me up at the airport. I'm not going to be able to make it to tomorrow. He was going to be here this morning in service to flirt with you a little bit, but you'll just have to wait here tomorrow night because it is going to be a phenomenal night. And I'm going to yield. I'm going to, I'm going to let him do most of the sharing. I've got a few things that I'm going to talk about, but for the most part, it's going to be Marcus declaring the word of Marcus. You don't need to miss it. Invite people. I said this on Wednesday night, and I'm going to say it again. Invite people that look like you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invite people that look like you, that share your ethnicity, that share uh, the, the, your, 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 your same persuasion. Invite people that look like you and be here tomorrow night. Probably. Now don't, don't arrive at 7.15 because you, we're already going to be moving and you're gonna, you're, the train's going to... It'll miss you, so you need to get here on time. So, so for those of you that struggle with being on time, service starts at 6.30. Okay? So we're going to hit the ground running tomorrow night as together we break down walls. Stand to your feet all over this building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it was a good day. I was glad when they said unto me. Oh, I feel like preaching.
Yes, 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 yes. So let me bless you. I bless you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I claim abundance and supernatural increase to come and be one with you all the days of your life. In all of your getting, get understanding. Don't just discover, but fulfill your destiny. Hug about 15 and a half people before you leave this building today and know that Jesus loves you and so do we. Peace. Ah, harvest.